Hi, I'm Jaffer from Antbirtha. Thank you for spending a few minutes learning about the Antbirtha Program Network today. We'll share about our open and focused program network together as ideal to support people in need of social services and helpers across the country. Let's dive in. Customers of all kinds use the Antbirtha Network. We call their staff helpers. A helper is a person navigating on behalf of a person in need, like a social worker, a librarian, a case manager, and so forth. We call the person in need the seeker. The Aunt Bertha Network supports all of these entry points as places where helpers can navigate. Part of our mission is to ensure there's privacy and dignity in the process of finding help. This is why we also support self-navigation. This means the seeker can search for programs and make private referrals to social services as well. As an example, in New York City, 1,500 kiosks on the street throughout the boroughs have Aunt Bertha, supporting anyone in need with self-service. There are more than 350,000 program locations serving people available through the Aunt Bertha Network. We believe this long tail of services is very important to helping people. There might be a domestic violence hotline in Chicago that serves nationwide, or there may be a small nonprofit locally that serves honorably discharged veterans with utility payment help. As part of an open program network philosophy, we consider eligibility and we do not hide available programs. Of course, community engagement with nonprofits and, and building local community trust between nonprofits and the helpers in the community is essential. We do this collaboratively with our customers and as a shared service in communities. Over time, we see a few flavors of engagement. The first are CBO partners. They agree to reply to referrals they may use intake tools such as scheduling and generally keep track of all cases. The second are participating CBOs. These organizations may receive referrals, though they may not always respond due to staff, privacy, or other follow-up methods that they use. Third are other CBOs. These may be food pantries or other programs that accept a referral, though they use that information to manage capacity. At a food pantry, often they require the transaction to remain anonymous. So here are a few examples. In the network, each customer is able to feature, rank, and score programs. Not only programs in the network, but also their own internal programs. This enables creating a focused network in addition to making available the long tail of services. This approach provides helper staff with a reliable way to know who to expect follow-ups from and when to encourage the seeker to reach out as well. In Illinois and Indiana, our customers are working hard on community engagement with us in a sustainable and scalable way. No forced contracts with nonprofits, just real trust building and network events. Here we see a few examples of the hundreds and thousands of CBO partners that reply, examples of the participating CBOs that use selective tools, and the available CBOs who can still provide services. So using this approach, the CBO partners grow and, and grow over time. So what does this approach mean for the seeker? The seeker will then have one comprehensive social care record. Additionally, the seeker will see all of the helper created connections and referrals, and the seeker only will see the personal referrals that that person made on their own. This is the key to ensuring privacy. So can we support a focused in-network approach and an open program network at the same time? You bet. We're doing this today with preferred CBO partners and also with social care vendors added to the network by our customers. Let's take a look at that. Here are two examples of customers that added their own value added benefits, only available on their staff site for referrals. Using this focused approach, customers can add their own programs or preferred partners only available to the staff for making that connection. So on the other hand, what does a closed contract only network look like? it's not so great. In a closed network, a vendor takes away the seeker's access to find services on their own. A vendor takes away many of the other entry points in the community for helpers to help this person. And a vendor removes that long tail of services. What's worse, in a forced contract for nonprofit scenario, helpers medicalize that referral process and overshare referral information to everyone in that closed system. As a seeker, I don't want overlap of sharing of referrals inappropriately, and I don't want staff seeing a private referral I completed on my own unless I choose to share it. At Aunt Bertha, we've listened to our customers, nonprofits nationwide, and community organizations to ensure we support the right tenets of social connections. 
ensure customers can focus the network for their staff, while at the same time opening the network for seekers, protect private referrals, and invest in trust for sustainable nonprofit engagement. Make tools free, not with temporary contracts. And finally, align the helpers across the community to be able to help the seeker, wherever that seeker may go for help. This benefits everyone in the experience of providing and receiving help. We're thankful to the 2.8 million users who have helped bring the network to life so far, and we're excited to continue to support millions of connections with the seeker at the center. Thank you.